Welcome to the July edition of Golf Away Tours webcast uh, this month. Um, we're normally really looking forward to the Open Championship, uh, which normally takes place in the third week, third week of July. This year was supposed to be at Royal St. George's, um, but obviously because of COVID, it was canceled uh, and pushed back to next year, which means that the 150th Open that was going to be at St. Andrews next year is, has been pushed back to 2022. Um, we've talked a little bit about that in the past. Um, so given, uh, given the Open Championship month and uh, a little talk about St. Andrews, what we wanted to do this month, this, uh, for this month's webcast was focus on St. Andrews. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have an interview with a good friend of ours, Seamus Cohn, who's the general manager of the Russex Hotel, uh, iconic hotel right on the 18th hole of the old course, um, a hotel that we use uh, almost exclusively for our clients going to St. Andrews. It's an unbelievable hotel, great location, um, and has been, is, is a little bit of a, a quaint uh, and older hotel, creaky floors and all that, but they are now, they've, they've, they've gotten new ownership and they're, they've been planning to do a renovation of the hotel for the last little while, and they're now uh, in the process of doing that, and they will have the renovation done uh, by mid next year. So exciting times, we're going to talk to Seamus about that, then we're going to bring Matt and, and Ron back. Uh, after the call and talk a little bit about our, our experiences in St. Andrews. So without any further ado, uh, let's uh, see what Seamus has to say. So joining us today on the Golf Away Tours webcast is a good friend of ours in St. Andrews, Seamus Cohn, who's the general manager of the Rusax Hotel, uh, one of our favorite places in St. Andrews. So Seamus, thanks for joining us. Thank you, TJ. Pleasure to be here, TJ. Thank you. So um, first of all, tell us a little bit about, uh, about yourself and uh, you know, how you got into the industry, uh, how you got into to getting to the Rusax Hotel in St. Andrews. Well, it, it's, I think sometimes it's, it's, it's bre the breeding is good, as we say in Ireland. I had two aunts who at the time were manageresses back in Ireland. That would be inappropriate now to be managers now. So uh, one of my aunts got me an opportunity in a great hotel called Dundrum House Hotel, in, in Southern, uh, Southern Ireland Tipperary. Uh, that was a 65 bedroom hotel. We built a golf course. Very fortunate to get a scholarship to the States from that. It was in, with, in Washington DC where I worked with the Hyatt Capital um, Hotel for, for four years and then came back to Ireland. Worked with Jewelry Style Hotel Group which was very, very strong in Ireland from, um, I came back there in 97 to 2000. Um, I spent eight years with Jewelries, um, then got into a boutique hotel called Malmaison for two years, and, and then finally came to McDonald's Hotels, which you'll be familiar with, used to own the Marine Hotel and the Russex as part of their portfolio. So I was actually regional general manager for McDonald's for eight years, um, where I had the pleasure of, of running the Marine Hotel in North Berwick, right beside the West Links and home to Muirfield, and hosted the Open in 2013 when we had Phil staying with us for, for the week, which was fantastic, uh, along with Paul McGinley and Tom Watson, who were Ryder Cup captains at the time. So a very, very popular week. But um, I, I, I left the business for a little bit and did something different and came back. And then I worked in a golf resort down in the UK called Belts and Woods, which was one of the largest domestic UK golf clubs in, in, in the UK. And made my way back to the Russex on the 8th of October, 2018, when I was asked to come back to help uh, provide the Russex with a five-star journey and potential takeover with investors. Um, that didn't happen at that time, but um, on the 4th of November 2019, uh, AJ Capital Partners purchased the Russex Hotel from McDonald Hotels. Um, and now we're in a very exciting journey as we are in the midst of a complete renovation and addition of an additional 44 bedrooms um, to where we, hope and where we hope to open its entirety um, at the end of, of, of June, early July, uh, 2021. Absolutely. And we'll definitely get into a lot of that exciting times ahead. And um, we've used the hotel almost exclusively for our St. Andrews clients um, over uh, the number of years that I've been with Golfway Tours. It's, uh, it's just such an awesome spot to stay, obviously right on the 18th hole of the, uh, of, of, the, of the old course. And so we'll get into a little bit more about the hotel. But first off, uh, obviously, we're living in strange times nowadays with everything that's going on in COVID. And, uh, so give us a little bit of a, uh, an idea of how things are at the hotel and in St. Andrews in these times and, and how things are progressing in terms of the phases of reopening. Absolutely. Well, very surreal times. We're, we've just completed 101 days of, of lockdown, um, which nobody could have envisaged um, earlier on in the year. Um, 
it was it happened very very quickly um we had to advise all the team that um the hotel was due to be closed and going to be closed for the foreseeable future which is not an easy time and we had to reassure the team that everything would be okay um thankfully the government over here were put in a very strong furlough system so the team were able to get paid 80 percent of what they would be owed up to a maximum of two and a half grand a month. So that really kind of set any fears aside. I was fortunate enough to keep a team of five with me where we were able to um, ensure that we controlled and managed the hotel for the safety of, of the building itself uh, from insurance purposes, but also dealing with our clients, more importantly, our suppliers who were calling and needed some reassurances on, on payment of bills that they were owed. And also our clients who had booked, who had bookings in really from April onwards. And we had to work very closely with, with our clients in terms of explaining what the options were. And, and thankfully, we were able to spend a lot of time rescheduling a lot of business from 2020 to 2021, which was was great in terms of not losing the business and, and ensuring that the clients were, were ready to, to take a step back in 2020 and move on to 2021. Um, in terms of our team, uh, we've suddenly realized that team meetings and Zoom calls are now the new world of hospitality. Um, we, we, I send out a weekly email to all the team just on, on, on a little update on what's happening and, and creating some fun um, ideas. I did show them that I was now the bin cleaner and I was emptying bins on a daily basis, which went down very well. Um, but we also got some really good Zoom calls and, and, and Zoom, Zoom quizzes, which the team bought into as well as speaking to some of the more the senior team on what was happening and, and more importantly, what we need to do when we reopen. Um, mm. And speaking of reopening, it's, it's again, it's a very, very different world. You, you know me, TJ, I'm more of a handshake guy. I like to be out in the lobby. Um, and, and, and when we reopen, I've got to be a little bit more placid and have my mask on or have a screen between me and our customer and um, ensuring whilst we look after the hospitality side, which we're very, very comfortable with, we've also got to ensure the safety of both our patrons and of our employees is of paramount importance. And we've taken steps where now we have all sanitizing units, stations, um, as you come into the hotel, we've got Perspex screens on the front desk. We've got little bottles of hand sanitizer for everybody in the team. We've got big bottles of hand sanitizer. We have uh, fogging machines now, which we will be using to clean the rooms and seal the rooms. So quite a lot of strategic health and cleanliness um, options and we've had to go out and purchase those like everybody else and, and ensure that our customers feel very safe and comfortable when they arrive with us TJ. When we reopen now on the 15th of July which is which is really fantastic um, after as I say 101 days of, of lockdown. Yeah that's exciting we're finally moving to that stage and uh, hopefully uh, you know Canadians and, and well Canadians and Americans can get over there sooner than later but uh, it'll, it'll probably be a little while yet but anyway exciting time and you could touch a little bit on it before about uh, the new ownership Obviously, McDonald Hotels owned it previously, and they have a, a number of hotels across the UK that um, that, that golfers use, from, all the way from uh, down in London up to up into Scotland. And, um, so now the new owners have come in, and they've um, really decided to move forward with the renovation plans. So, uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, about the renovations, and I know you touched on it a little bit before, but what are people going to expect in terms of the change of the hotel? If they've been there before, how are things going to look different when they when they yeah, go there I, I think, after I think June twenty one? I think it's wonderful that the, our new owners, AJ Capital Partners, um, very much respect St Andrews for what it is and, and the nostalgic history of, of, of the university, of the old course, the golf history, um, right down to Tom Morris. And their vision is very simply to make it, uh, we, we, we probably would argue that it's the most iconic golfing location now as it is, but they want to make it the most golf, iconic golfing location and the best customer service experience in the world. Now, these are quite strong words, CJ, as you know well, and you'll have traveled to many hotels, but with, with utilizing, we really want to create that nostalgic experience that you get on, on the old course. Um, we want to mirror that inside in the hotel, and they're going to really focus on the design and you know, very warm colors, very colors within the history of St. Andrews, and really everything will be reflected about St. Andrews in the hotel, keeping very much the traditional dynamic feel, but with, with a modern twist. Um, so I think it's very heartening for me as a general manager to have a company that believe in what's there already and now want to upgrade it and give what we call the old lady, the, probably the faceless that we all knew was badly needed. And, you know, McDonald's tells it superbly well, but they didn't have the money to take it to the next level that was required. And, and AJ have, and we're, we're very excited, but our team, our, our, our operators, as yourself will know, our, our, our local operators and, and the local community, because I think, it's very exciting in St. Andrews at the moment. We've got the RNA building is right beside me. They're getting redone. Our, our competition down the line, the old course hotel, they're getting some work done. So I think everyone's raising the bar a little bit. And of course, 
you know, we've got the open now put back to 2022, which gives us that time to really develop and get everything right so that when we do reopen, we'll be able to, as I say, match that on-course experience, off-course at the Russex Hotel. I mean, where else would you want to be, TJ? Come on. Oh, trust me. I, I, I keep telling people it's my favorite place in the world to travel for golf and uh, my favorite town. And I get goosebumps when I go there. And I love staying at the Russex Hotel. And, um, so, and, and it's nice that, uh, you know, that they're putting that kind of money in. And, you know, all of our clients that go there love the hotel. And uh, it certainly has a different feel from some others, different from the Old Course Hotel. And it has that quaintness, that, that old charm to it and you know creaky floors and so on and and all the rooms are a little bit different and so on and and i love that charm and um but i know adding the modern twist twist is probably gonna you know uh I definitely uh increase the the value for for our clients and and a lot of our clients will love that so um now you've also purchased another property or the owners have proper purchased another property up the street can you tell us a little bit about that you're pretty familiar with it right now so we, we're delighted that we've, we've, we've um, Mr. Greg Incall owned um, Purchase, Incol, um, Purchase 19 Pilmer Links, and now uh, AJ have, have decided they've purchased that, along with a two-bedroom apartment that was also connected within that line, which was owned by a Dr. Black. So literally, the, the two-bedroom apartment is going to become part of now of the new original hotel, existing hotel, and we're going to have this amazing four-bedroom townhouse, sophisticated townhouse, only a pitching wedge from the 18th green or the, or the first tee box, um, which will be amazingly for either eight golfers sharing two people per room with bathrooms en suite, or maybe if, if people want to upgrade a little bit, uh, their own very nice king size room and, and en suite with TVs in, in every room. We've got a, a downstairs kitchen and also downstairs dining room. And we're going to have, uh, we're going to tweak it a little bit. We've got an ups, a middle floor lounge area that's going to become downstairs, and that lounge area is going to become a bedroom. Um, but we're also going to have a movie room as well, which is um, some nice little trays of whiskeys. You've got your Sky Sports to watch or your movies or go back to the time watching a great sports movie. So um, it's going to be very exciting. We're going to sell that in conjunction with the hotel. It's going to be very much underneath the hotel. So you can buy that as a, as a, as a room only product. You can buy that with breakfast included. You'll have full exclusive use of all the hotel properties. Um, so it's going to be a little gem. For those golfers that want that little bit more space, it's the perfect viewpoint. And, and again, yeah. they'll be directly associated with the hotel. The concierge will bring them down to the house, talk them through everything they need to go through. Though, as you and I probably know, I t they're probably not going to spend too much time in their teaching because between <laughs> the golf and the bars and restaurants and meeting meeting the likes of me, TJ, I mean, why would they be in the house really, you know? No, exactly. You got to share a nice Guinness with you. Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah. So that's great. And and you, you teased it a little bit before when we were talking um, uh, just a minute ago, but the, they also purchased the Marine Hotel, which is one of our favorites up in North Berwick. So, and you'd been there before, obviously. So, tell our uh, our listeners a little bit about the Marine Hotel, right? Yeah, over the Marine, the Marine, Barrick. the Marine is very close to my heart. And and um, when the Russex was originally purchased, along with the Randolph, I, I was a little bit surprised. Maybe the Marine, Marine maybe wasn't purchased, but I think they really looked at it, and they've really got a very strong sense of feeling of golf hotels in Scotland that like to be associated with. And again, it fits the dynamics in terms of the West Links, again, looking out over um, the Marine. You've got Muirfield just around the corner and you've got some of the new, the Gullum ones and, and you've got some of the new courses, the Renaissance and Archerville. So um, very much in line with what they want to achieve. They want to have really high-end golfing hotels within their portfolio. Again, they're going to take that from 84 bedrooms to 90 bedrooms. Um, and again, the Marine, as you know, has got great space. So I think they, they'll do some very exciting things with that space, really focus on the food and beverage dining options around that area. And of course, again, the Marine is blessed with um, some great spa and leisure facilities, which I think are going to get a real upgrade from the new owners, which again, and you know, when I was there, you know, our competition, we went after Cameron House, we went after Glen Eagles and the Marine, I believe will be going to very, down the very same line as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. That's great. So um, now I know that uh, part of the plans for the for the Russex Hotel is to uh, incorporate uh, one of the best drinking locations in the, in the world of golf. Um, what are the plans there? Is it uh, is it something you can share? Is there what's uh, what's the plan? It, it, for the it, it is. It, it, it's, I don't have any visuals because we're, we're we're holding those back, TJ, for showtime and show business. But we're, we're very excited that um, part of the renovation we're going to have a three thousand square foot rooftop bar and restaurant. And again. If you consider that looking out onto the eight, just behind me here, looking out onto the 18th green and obviously the fairways of the first and the 18th and the Swilkin Bridge. I mean, where else would you want to be on a summer's evening having a martini, a cocktail, a beer, a whiskey, having fine, having, you know, fine dining, vibrant dining options. We're going to have private dining facilities. We're going to have about a hundred seats 
within the restaurant and about 30 outside. Um, so it's going to be absolutely, um, it's, sorry, TJ, it's going to be absolutely, um, I think, dynamic. And I think people will want to book this. This will be booked out in advance, left, right, and center. So I think this will be an amazing time for everybody. Uh, we're really going to pitch it high end. We, we, we're looking at during the afternoons, champagne teas, high end, and then it's, you know, where do you want to go somewhere special for a bite to eat and take in the nostalgia experience, take in the old course views with great, and you know, it's not going to be stuffy service. It's going to be very vibrant, very fun, um, and a great place to come with a couple of friends or come with, 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 with a large parties and so on. So very exciting, TJ, very exciting. Yeah, it is very exciting. And you know, every time I'm, I'm at the Russex and I'm having breakfast downstairs, I try to get one of those seats right over by the window and just overlook the 18th and the first hole in the, in the RNA clubhouse. And I always take a picture there and, and send it to uh, friends or, or share it on social media because it's just one of the best views in the world of golf. And so to get that view from a higher elevation is just going to be spectacular. And I can't wait to see that. That's going to be amazing. Absolutely. So, I mean, I mean, imagine, imagine the Open Championship and you're watching someone hole a putt or chip in to win the Open Championship. Wow, my God. So my spot's reserved for 2022 up there on the Sunday. You're, uh, you're in, you're in. Okay, you're great. in, Tisha, perfect, you're in, perfect. you're in, you're in. Um, so yeah, lastly, I guess, um, you know, you don't have to sell it to me, but uh, why do you think St. Andrews is such a special place in the world of golf? You know, for, for any avid golfer that understands golf, that, that gets the history of St. Andrews. St. Andrews, you know, I mean, I, when I was at the Marine, you know, I taught uh, the West Links and, and Smurfy. But when you come to St. Andrews, it's just the history. It's just the people. It's the golf courses. It's Tom Morris, young Tom Morris, old Tom Morris. St. Andrews is, is the mecca for all golfers and particularly Lynx golf. So to come to St. Andrews, and have that coming in already, and then coming to the Russex, which arguably the most iconic golfing location in the world, with now a complete upgrade for the old lady, with, with the additions of the rooftop bar and restaurant, all the bedrooms being updated, all the restaurants, the basement bar downstairs, which is going to become a really funky, and we're going to take on the likes of our friends at Dunvig and the Jigger Inn. We, ha we have it all, TJ. We have the views, we have the location. We will bring that service. We will bring the food and beverage concepts that will that were required to make it the best golfing experience in the world. Absolutely, and I can't wait to to get back again. Uh, hopefully, sooner than later. We don't know what's going on in the world, but um, uh, we'll certainly have some number of clients visiting you guys next year. And uh, looking forward to getting over there again myself. So. Uh, it looks like a pretty decent day out there today. Hopefully, you got a game of golf planned uh, later this yeah, afternoon. No, or? not no. I, I'm I'm doing I'm doing budgets at the moment and doing uh, going on a construction call at four o'clock. So um, when I get home tomorrow evening on Friday evening, maybe we'll get nine holes in tomorrow evening. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Right on. Well, Seamus, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, it's great to catch up with you and uh, look forward to sharing a Guinness with you sometime, uh, hopefully sooner than later. Lovely, TJ. It'd be my pleasure. Thank you so much for bringing me on today. Thank you. Sure. So a great chat there with Seamus Cohn and, uh, um, you know, exciting times for the Russex Hotel and we can't wait uh, until they get all the renovations done. Uh, can't wait to have a, a Guinness on top of that uh, rooftop patio overlooking the old course. It's going to be a, a pretty spectacular spot and, uh, you know, will be one of the iconic 19 holes in golf for sure um, moving forward. So really excited about that. And uh, so now we're going to bring in Ron and Matt and uh, talk a little bit about our own uh, individual experiences with St. Andrews. Uh, we've each... Uh, been lucky enough to be in St. Andrews multiple times. Um, so I think what we're going to do is start off with um, our first experience in St. Andrews. And for me, actually, it was a little bit different. I actually went to St. Andrews when I was 15 years old with my father. And he was uh, in the military. We lived in Germany. Um, we were able to catch a, a, a military flight up to St. Andrews or to Lucas, which is the Air Force base right beside St. Andrews. Walked into town, had no plans at all. It happened to be right before the Dunhill Championship, so there were hardly any uh, uh, available accommodations. Um, we ended up sleeping in a trailer, actually, uh, on some, in somebody's uh, driveway. I went down, enjoyed the golf courses. We weren't able to play the old course because it was closed, but played all the others and just had an incredible time. And it's one of the uh, uh, most memorable weekends I've had, golf weekends I've had. And um, uh, that was a pretty memorable experience for me. So, uh, Matt, what about you? Your, your first time was just a couple of years ago. Uh, we went together. So uh, tell us a little bit about, um, about your first time in St. Andrews. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, first time was um, a few years back, uh, and it was kind of a mix. Uh, I met you. You were already in Ireland. So we did a few days in Dublin and then popped over St. Andrews for a few days. Um, so it was a nice little first introduction to um, that side of the pond for me. Um, and it was kind of cool because you've obviously been multiple times. So I had someone taking me around. So 
I, I could see all the cool places that I needed to see in the small amount of time that I was there. Um, but obviously the, the moment when you first kind of come around the bend and you start to see the town, that's one of the coolest moments, um, for your first time when you, I mean, every time you make that drive now, you get excited because you see it and you know how much fun the town is. But the first time's like, it's a bit of a goosebumps chilling moment. And then, um, I'm sure a lot of people do it. What we did was we kind of drove across the first, first and 18th fairway, which was just a really cool experience too. Like never, never done that on any golf course, let alone probably the most famous one on the planet. So um, we weren't lucky enough to get a time on the old. So we played the new and Jubilee on those few days, both incredible golf courses. And then the one thing that we did, which I would recommend to everybody who goes to St. Andrews, regardless of if you play the old course um, is we got up nice and early on one of the days that the course was open and we walked one through 18 before anybody had even played the golf course. Um, I think we even caught up to like the grounds crew at one point and they don't even care. Um, but it's just cool. Cause you see every part of the golf course and it's not you chasing around your golf ball for four hours. Um, you have kind of enough time to go see and go look at different angles and, and really appreciate the golf course. Um, so, so yeah. And then obviously on Sundays, they, it's, it's open to do that all day long. So you can take yeah. as long as you want. You can bring, bring, uh, some lunch out there and, and sit on your favorite tea box. Who, who knows? Right. So yeah, yeah. It's, just a, it's just a special place. Yeah. And you know what? That is a good point, man. Getting up early in the morning and doing that first thing in the morning, I think is, uh, there's something special about that. Right. And I remember the first time I did go over when I was 15, my father and I did walk the old course, couldn't play it, but we walked it. Um, and of course I was, you know, oh, my tee shot would go here and then I'd knock it on the green and I'd make the putt. And I think I ended up shooting a bogey 368 that day. It was a great round, but, um, it was, uh, it was, it was pretty special just to walk in and like you said, see the property and see the movement of it. And sometimes when you're golfing, you don't get a chance to kind of take in all the surroundings because you're so focused on your game. So, um, that is quite a cool experience. And, uh, yeah, we had a great time there. Um, yeah. when you came over and I love showing people uh, St. Andrews for the first time and showing them their, uh, uh, seeing their reaction. So your reaction, just before we move on to Ron, your reaction on the Rustics Hotel, because you got a chance to stay there as well. Yeah. And, and I, I obviously jumped over that cause I had a little blurb on it uh, written here, but um, yeah, we stayed there. Uh, and it's like you said, um, kind of in your intro before the um, interview with Seamus, like it, it's obviously like a little bit of an older hotel and it's, quirky in its own way but um but they're going through a lot of changes and it's going to be awesome but we had a pretty incredible room that looked right out onto the like first and 18th fair with the old course so i don't know if there's a better morning view on the planet um especially if you're a golfer um so yeah it's 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 cool it's just got a lot of character and then that breakfast spot is one of the best um if you're lucky enough to get a good seat and kind of you're practically sitting on the road beside the 18th fairway so um yeah it's just a really cool spot and that it's obviously why we use it and everybody loves it great great so ron um your first time in uh in st andrews was with a, on a buddy's trip and um you guys had uh, quite the experience in town tell us a little bit about it yeah I had, uh, quite the experience it was before um, tj was in the business so i didn't have the privilege of of getting him and all his expertise in booking and ended up staying in a uh in a B and B close to the course, but not in the Rusak's hotel. I have been there at the Rusak since with TJ and um, great property, and I'm really looking forward to seeing it with the new renovations. It's a it's a fabulous location. And turning in that corner, like Matt had mentioned, and coming down that street when you're driving literally beside the 18th hole is uh, an amazing experience. Driving into a parking lot right beside the 18th hole at St Andrews. But when the first time that we went, um, I guess a, a few interesting things happened. You can read about my great experience of the first hole um, in the uh, in the newsletter and our hole of the month is the first hole at St. Andrews so you can read a little bit about that uh, a little bit of an interesting experience and, and a great round and thought it was the easiest course I'd ever played until I turned around and came back into the wind and rain on the back nine after playing downwind and sun on the way there uh, so uh, interesting round but I guess we we got a measure of fame actually in uh, in St. Andrews and we were there it proves that uh, it's a it's a real town like everywhere else. Um, we actually had our club stole out of our car um, while we were there. So, uh, you know, Matt gave a recommendation about walking the course. I would recommend locking your or taking your clubs out of the car and bringing them inside, or at the very least, making sure that absolutely sure that you have bulletproof glass or a locked door, because uh, ours were stolen. We became quite famous, and and showing how great a town it is, we um, we ended up getting great deals on 
on rain gear because that got stolen because it was in the bag and we got club rentals for next to nothing and everybody in the town sort of rallied around us and we went to pubs and people knew who we were. We were the guys who had their clubs stolen because it doesn't happen there very often. We just happened to be the ones. Um, so quite the memorable experience that didn't finish one bit the five times uh, of enjoying Sanders and, uh, and ambiance and, and just living golf for, for a week was was unbelievable. We based ourselves there for the whole week and just had a fantastic time. So, so yeah, it's uh, it's a quite the first experience in St. Andrews, Ron. And uh, um, since then, uh, you came back with uh, with us last year on our curling and golf trip, um, which was incredible as well. But um, one of the things, uh, you know, beyond the golf and, and everything else in, in St. Andrews, obviously, it's a cool town just to walk around. And I had the luxury of actually uh, renting an apartment and living there for a few weeks, uh, a few years ago, just to really try to get a little bit more of a feel of the town and, and meet more people and, and just to get a, a, a better uh, understanding of, of St. Andrews uh, from our perspective from the travel industry. It was an incredible experience for me. I loved it. Love being able to get up in the morning, go to some cafes, you know, get some work done in the cafe, uh, meet some locals, walk around town, go to the cathedral, go to, through the university. There's, it's just such a cool walking town. Um, and there's some, some incredible places to have a pint and, uh, and a bite to eat. So, uh, Matt, out of the places we've been, uh, what's your favorite spot to, to have a bite to eat and your favorite spot to have a pint? Um, yeah, I mean, off the, off the top of my head, like the, the big names come to mind. So it's probably not super original. Um, but the, that, that a few days that we spent there, uh, I love the Dunny. I just love how, I love the character. I love how kind of chill it is. It's all golf all the time from floor to ceiling, literally. Um, <laughs> there's literally yeah. pictures on the ceiling, um, of, of people with, the claret jug and people playing the old um and you're literally you can from one of the windows you can see the 18th green um so there's a lot of the golfers who played that day congregate there and it's just golf stories all night long and all all day um so that's probably my favorite place if i had to pick one um out of the out of the many right on and ron yourself so i got the name is escaping me i took you there when we were there at the uh, uh sweeping sweep and swing last year um for for dinner one night we took all the boys there and had a great time but the name is escaping me now and i was desperately trying to look for it on my phone here and i couldn't find it but if you're looking at just a pint and i'll come up with the name at some point and i'll, I'll add it in so people if they are interested they can they can go there um the jigger um when you sit there um watching people come in on the 17th and 18th holes um it's quite the experience um nice little patio Great place to have a pint. Uh, yeah. A bit of a surreal experience to be sitting there at that particular spot watching people on the old course. It's, yeah. it's quite amazing. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool spot to sit and watch people. And uh, I remember the one time, I, the first time I played the old course with my father, we played later in the day. A lot of our group played early in the morning. We got on at different times. And by the time we came through on, uh, on 17, they were a little uh, uh, liquored up and, uh, and, and <laughs> giving us the gears as we were playing the 17th hole. It was a, it was a cool experience. So, um, the uh, was the place you're talking about the Balgo Lar Larder one, um, uh, Ron? The oh one well, no, there was that. That was that was an amazing food experience. I forgot about the larder too. Yeah, so the Bal um, Balgo that barn. Is, yeah, it's just as you kind of go out of town on um, on the road uh, going past all the courses, uh, the St. Andrews courses. Uh, it's in a barn and and it's just a great uh, kind of barbecue place. Uh, uh, really cool dining experience, and that's one of my favorites yeah. for sure. Um, I also yeah, love the, I also love the Adamson. Uh, the Adamson's a great restaurant, uh, a little bit more formal. Um, great spot for a final dinner for our groups. We go there quite a bit. Um, and then for me, you know, obviously the Dunny is a place I'm going to go every time I go to St Andrews, and it's such a great uh, bar to, to hang out in. Uh, there's a couple other great pubs in town. The Keys Pub is a great spot for if you want a good whiskey. Um, you know, there's just, it, it's fun to just walk around town and jump in the different places. And so there's so many places to see. So, um, obviously, uh, we're all pretty passionate about St. Andrews and, uh, can't wait to get back again. Don't know when it's going to be, uh, hopefully sooner than later, but, um, yes. uh, if people want to, uh, are interested in, and available uh, to travel this year. And obviously we don't know if that's going to happen, but the old course did, or St. Andrews Links Trust did come up with an email recently, just a couple of days ago saying there are. Uh, old course tea times available in 2020. So uh, if people are interested, go to the website, sanandrews.com, 
and they can they can see some uh, some of the uh, the application for some tea times for this year. Uh, of course, we don't know if we'll be able to get over there if they'll accept uh, travelers from Canada before the end of the year. But um, obviously, there are times available, which isn't always the case. So, anyway, uh, that was a great uh, uh, chat with Seamus. Um, you know, again, you know, bringing back sort of memories of us traveling to St. Andrews and can't wait to see the changes to the Russics next year when they're done. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that's that's the July edition of the Golf Way Tours webcast. Great, great, prior, great Priors in. Ah, there you go. Great there for good, good one. Yeah. And a massive, a massive, rows. massive draft yeah. selection. They do have a great draft <laughs> selection and uh, a and great spot for dinner as well. And uh, yeah, just up the road from, of course, everything's walking distance in. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Just up the road from their sites, which is uh, another great spot. So, um, yeah, and I guess just to plug in 2022, the 150th Open, we do have rooms available uh, and a package available to go watch the Open Championship, the 150th Open, and uh, play some golf that week. So, if anybody's interested, check out our website, golfawaytours.com. Uh, we'll be back next month and uh, look forward to seeing you then. In the meantime, hope everybody has a great July, plays lots of golf, and stay safe, everyone. <laughs>